to understand. Uh, and so, uh, continuing on death, you know, we can go back to Jesus' friend Lazarus, who, who died, you know, he didn't come in a timely manner like was requested of his family, and Jesus lagged. And uh, by the time Jesus got around to helping Lazarus from his sickness, Lazarus had been dead for four days. And of course they tried to explain to him, Jesus, you know, you don't understand because Jesus was ready to go and resurrect him, to raise him up, to heal him. And, uh, you know, they explained to him, Jesus, you don't understand because by now he stinks. But Jesus said, you know what? You know, he, he, he wept at that point because of their lack of faith in believing that God had this power through Jesus Christ to raise the dead. So Jesus went and sure enough, he raised Lazarus up. He called out to him and uh, you know all those cells, all those molecules in Lazarus' body came back to life. The life force came back into his body and that's, that's it. You know, I mean it must have blown everybody's mind to high heaven. But uh, nonetheless it happened. So it's, I think it's important to, to understand as best as I can from the scriptures about death. And to say, you know, that's where we should, each individual, you should go to investigate, you know, what is written about death. But basically, Jesus intermixed the two words, death and sleep, that these things were interchangeable because of this resurrection of the dead that will, at some point in time, it's going to take place. There's going to be this whole new age that we're going to start. That's it. Jesus said it's the end of the age. He didn't ever say it was going to be the end of the world. It's just going to be the end of the age. It's often referred to as the end of the world, and I'm pretty sure Jesus never said it, but uh, it's been said. It's not that. It might be the end of the world system, end of Satan's rule on earth, but it is not the end of the world. It's not like time is going to cease to exist. It's just that we're shifting gears, and the earth is going to be cleansed up, cleaned up like a diseased cell on God's body, metaphorically speaking. And all those that are not found worthy to inherit <laughs> this renewed earth, this purified earth, are going to a different place. They have to go to a place that's more painful. Whatever makes sense. You could put yourself in God's shoes and say, well, where do you put the disobedient? Those that have decided they are my enemies and they're opposed to what is good. They are opposed to humanity. They're murderers. They're liars. They're hypocrites. All these type of people, okay, don't make the ship. Okay, they will not be able to stand before the glory of God. The spirit of truth is the Holy Spirit of God. And when they are found unworthy to stand before that spirit, they shrink away, and then they go to this place called hell, which is actually, if you look into it, there's a very literal place underground where these, uh, you know, these elitists, these Illuminati class, the, you know, all these people have prepared because you know, they've probably got it prepared for their own reason. I mean, they would probably like to destroy the earth with nuclear warfare, hydrogen bombs and whatnot, and then come up and it would all be theirs except for a few minions they could, uh, you know, enslave for their purposes. But they're not going to get their way. It's going to unfold on God's terms, the way God wants it to, and it's going to be a beautiful thing, and it's already happening with knowledge. Knowledge is reaching a crescendo. Everybody I talk to is aware. That's very positive. And I'd like to focus there for a second and talk about 2008 and how 90 plus percent of the American people did not want a banking bailout. They didn't want a banking takeover. We knew what happened. We knew that these money printers at the very top had dramatically, intentionally, deliberately overextended themselves and dumped all this currency on the market there before debasing your, your currency by increasing your cost of living, in particular your housing cost. They really ramped up the cost of, of housing and then that translates to the cost for rent. It translates basically to your cost of living, your burden. That's what your cost of living is. Without any compensating wage increase, no accountability, no checks and balances, they just do it arbitrarily. It goes back to what Jimmy Carter said not too long ago, that we do not have a democracy in America anymore. Okay, and that's becoming very blatantly obvious to everybody. So everybody has to admit that the system needs to fail. We need a reset of reality. And what's it all about? Economic reality. This is it. The love of money is the root of all evil. We've got to understand what it's going to take. Why I'm always harping on sound currency. Why the greatest people I, I, I believe in history, like JFK, 
you know, they understood these basic economic principles. In order to have a rising tide of prosperity that was fair and across the board for everybody, combined with an ever-decreasing work week, you need sound currency. Sound currency is a means to an end. What is the end I'm talking about? It's freedom. It's liberty for everybody, okay, because everybody deserves it. It's not just a few educated class or, you know, uh, born into wealth class or the strong class or smart class, whatever it is that people are able to contend with the system better. It's not just them that deserve to get ahead. Everybody deserves to get ahead and have prosperity. But you understand these people would lose control. They'd be rendered irrelevant and they can't have that. They're control freaks. So they need the war. So they need oppression, they need persecution, they need poverty, they need crime, they need the problems to persist. If the problems start going away, they will start fading away, and they know that. And this is why Satan is it right, he is an integral part, integral to this system continuing. And all the people better get, get some understanding here. It's coming down to the wire, and you're going to have to choose whose side you're on on the side of humanity or inhumanity because this whole facade has to come down and it's going to come down in good time it seems like it's far overdue with all the knowledge and wisdom on the earth among the uh, the masses are starting to figure all this stuff out how poverty is invented again i would point to Cla cloward and piven strategy yes they do want us poor they say okay you got it you got me well to save the earth that's all they've got left that's all they've got up their sleeve is this idea, well, we can't let the masses burn up the carbon dioxide and all this stuff. So we, you know, we're, ra we're, we're raising the, uh, the price of fuel and you know, price fixing, which is the opposite of supply and demand. We have the most unsound currency because of this, this price fixing, of this false god of this world. That's what money is. Jesus likened it. It's a competing master for God's attention and affection. Okay? And it's unworthy. It, 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 it's evil. There's no two ways about it. It pollutes the hearts of men. And it's not to be trusted. But how many of us can really deal with that and say, I don't want anything to do with it? No, we need the stuff. We need the stuff that the money buys. We, we value a roof over our head. We value food on our table. We value paying our bills. Okay, but what do we really have any use for money? We don't. You know, we cannot serve two masters. That's the main point to understand here. And you have to be ready for a perfect world down to the, the smallest detail. And each one of us is born with the potential, the ability, the capacity to understand what a perfect world will look like. And ask yourself, be ruthlessly honest and say, what role will money play in that world? And you'll have to admit none. It's the most discriminating form of, 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 of tyranny out there, okay? It's haves and have-nots. It's very simple. Money is a, a, a vile, filthy lucre. Where did it get that term? The filthy lucre. It's, a, it's an advantage, disadvantage situation. And that's the way the status quo, the establishment these evil people that are, are bent on evil. They're determined to go against God's will. They are, they, are, they are avowed enemies of all that is truly good and righteous and pure. They're haters of humanity, and they write openly. Again, reference to Georgia Guidestones. They want to reduce the earth by over 85%. We have to all understand, what, and, and the colleges and universities are pumping this crap out like this is good social Darwinism. Survival of the strongest is good. It's like saying price fixing is good, because that's what it's going to do. It's going to weed out the weak, you know? All those suicides that are committed because of financial tyranny and terrorism upon the oppressed. Okay? All the people dying out in the cold, the homelessness because of this. The diseases that are caused by, you know, the elements out there. And unhealthy living conditions. The filthy water that kills people. The lack of nutrition that's killing people. And all of it's invented. It's all, un it, 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 it's totally unnecessary. This has been foisted upon us by some very evil people, and we all got to wake up to that understanding. That is the truth of the situation. And they still got a lot of power, but their power is waning. I mean, hell, we've got factions breaking down in the military. 
we've got factions breaking down in the law enforcement right here in America. I know this as a matter of fact. This is not conjecture. I'm not wishful thinking or making anything up. I know it's true. So there are some powerful forces at work here. This really is the showdown in slow motion. It's like the Battle of Armageddon. That's what has to take place in slow motion. And God wants to do it as gently and peaceably as possible. But there will be a point, a turning point, when this whole thing has to come full circle. I mean, could you imagine if you're a cop out there, you know, you love your job, you're doing something good for your community, you're the protector, the defender of the weak, and, you know, the, the protect and serve, all that good stuff, right? Good noble principle to be to the protector, the, the troops and all this. I get it, and most men get it, and most women get it. Okay, but could you imagine being told, tasked with having to go steal people's houses for these bankers? When you know what happened here, you know about liar loans. You know that what these banksters did, these top money printers, because it's all the policy, they're the most guilty ones, the money printers, because it should be assumed your local lending uh, uh, you know, entity is going to want to dump as much money as they can legally get away with as long as it's insured and covered, they're relatively sure that they're going to get, you know, paid back. That if they, they, they blow it and they overextend themselves, that they're insured. And that's exactly what they did. That's what they were promised and they trusted in their masters. Look at Henry Paulson with the economic terrorism out there. If you don't do this, you don't bail out these banks, we're going to have martial law and this, all this crap. Lies from the pit of hell. And the, both presidential candidates, both Obama and McCain, gave their stamp of approval to that. The American people had no choice at all, nothing viable. I mean, hell, I voted for Obama the first time around. You know, I, I believe I voted for Roseanne the second time around. But Obama? Give me a break. I, I mean, what, is, what the hell is he doing? You know, I mean, he had lost because he was put his stamp of approval on that banking bailout. You know, the only hope I had was that he was just deceiving. He was just getting his foot in the door by going along with this and that he was going to turn it around and stop this quantitative easing, stop this money printing that's destroying our currency through debasement, devaluation, through inflation of your cost of living, through putting the burden on who? The poor. That's the ones that are feeling the brunt. It isn't the rich paying the taxes. They finagle. They find a way out of it. They find loopholes to get out. They'll chart, start some phony charitable, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, type deal and, and, and just write off all their crap on taxes, you know? I mean, there's ways they do it, but it sure isn't falling on the backs of the poor. That's not what Obama's doing. Everything's falling on the, back, uh, on the backs of the poor. It's not falling on the backs of the rich. It's falling on the backs of the poor through inflation. That's how it happens. They just keep on just, just chipping away at our, at our standard of living, seeing how far they can go. And they've got inertia. They've got momentum. And it keeps happening. Hell, I saw the price of peanut butter just went up like 20% from the last time I was at the store, which was less than a week ago. Can you imagine? I mean, you know, this is how they're doing it, folks. It, it, it's sickening what they're doing to us. You know, just chipping away, and everybody's going, who's going to pay for it? Well, it, it, you know, it always falls on the backs of the poor. It is literally like Satan is running the show, and we're all being run roughshod over, led around by the nose, into this evil system and we're waking up and we know so where is this going to stop it's going to stop when people get it you've got to get it we need accountability we need checks and balances to have sound currency where are we getting it we're not getting it it's got to be through the squeaky wheels by making them so miserable from hearing it over and over and over we demand economic justice everybody deserves to get ahead they're not poor because they're lazy they're poor because they're being oppressed and persecuted, because they're under the yoke of financial tyranny, financial terrorism, by very evil satanic forces. Stop it now. That's the message. And it's got to get to be so miserable for these evildoers to hear this over and over and over and over and over that they relent. But one way or another, things will turn around. Even if it's just going to take the literal hand of God through this whole return of Jesus thing, this thing has to happen, folks. And you know what? This idea that they're going to stop the righteous, the decent, they're going to stop guys like Alex Jones out there with the big mouth, you know, exposing these people and so many others out there. They're not going to stop them. You know what's written? If you silence these type, you know what? The stones, the rocks will cry out.
And I believe that, that if God wants, that could be a very literal interpretation. But that's what that's what will happen. It's impossible. You can't do it.